Hey, people, I'm so happy to be here. Day two, day two, let's see. Uh, type in in the chat where you are and also type in if you were here yesterday. So you would say yesterday or day one. So let's see when we start getting people. I have so much goodness to show you. Oh, good. We are live. Exeter, New Hampshire, Nashville, Old Mystic, Connecticut, day two. Um, if you were here day one, say day one. Pennsylvania, hi. Hi, UK. Hi, Bombay. Oh, so good. Day one, New York. Good, good. Um, if you just, if this is your first day with me, um, let me, let me, if you just, oh, um, Becky, can you just make me big for now? Spotlight me, unless you're afraid to mess with it. Hello for Northampton, UK. Yeah, it should uh, be, Lila. Um, it might look different on yours, but you're spotlighted. Oh, okay. Um, if you're just joining me today, we I'm just doing this free series because we have a big sale and I wanted to do something different and, and get you excited about traditional media, get you excited about making art. And then hopefully that will fuel your career, your creative career. So I'm Lila Rogers, an art agent. I've been for 30 years and before that I was an illustrator. So, um, oh, thank you. Yes, I wore this. You see, look at this. I made this dress. So I'll take this off in a minute, but I'm starting rather formally. Then we'll get cool with art. This is Spring Break Art Camp. Um, two things I want to tell you. So I have things planned when I do these, but also it's serendipitous. In the morning, I things will come to me that I want to tell my students. And one is... Making art is about persevering. You have to stick with it, but it's also about pivoting. It's about pivoting and also everything else. Making art is about persevering and also pivoting and also everything else. So that is what art is about. And But Lila, I get so frustrated or I'm so hypercritical. I don't know how to stay with it. I don't know how to stay with it. The way to stay is getting pure, getting back to the materials. I was talking to my trainer this morning about what I'm doing and how I told you yesterday that materials, traditional materials have a soul because when you work digitally, which is absolutely fine, every mark you make, you're the boss of. You want a green line to go from here to here, you make that happen. In, in watercolor or ink, it might blur, it might blob it. The water, gravity, fluidity, osmosis, absorption into the paper. You have other forces of nature working for you. You see what I'm saying? And that's pretty magical. Luz, yes, you're an overthinker. We all are overthinkers. It's the human condition. The trick is to find ways to think less and feel more. That's what this series is about. Feel more about the art materials, which we're going to play with in a minute. I want to tell you before we start making art. The secret, this is the secret, write it down because I've been in business forever. Very, I'm so grateful. I've been so successful with all my businesses, illustration, then as an art agent, and now also with my e-course business, passion leads the way. As I started this series this morning, I mean, this, this vid, I said to you, I told the team, I really just, I'm, I'm really excited about tra traditional media. I'm using more myself and I want, I'm in love with that. Let's make this three-day series about that. Actually, we didn't even have a three-day series. It was like, let's do a three-day series. I want to do that. That's a microcosm of my whole business. Basically, it's about finding, thank you, Jennifer. It's finding what you're passionate about and obsess it. Obsess your passions. Get really good at what you love and find the people who want to buy it. And that's the secret to business. 
So that's it. Passion leads the, leads the way. Okay, Becky, would you spotlight the big art, the overhead, the flat lay? Okay. Now, I don't know. I think I'm going to try to. Oh, good. I did it. I'm so scared. Let me get rid of this participants panel. Do you have your art materials ready? You do not need them. You do not need them. Um, oh, good. I did this right. Phew. Ready to go. Okay, you can play along if you like. We're doing florals today. We're doing florals. We're doing plaids. We're doing foxglove. Um, I'll take any suggestions to lilla at lillarogers.com, my email, if you have suggestions of what to do in Paris. And I'll be in La Marais, La Marais this area, arrondissement section. And that um, I'm going to, uh, I wanted to do a flea market, a pen store, an art supply store, a paper store, and pins, like pins you wear. That's my whole objective with my husband. I said, do you want to see my schedule? Uh, do you want to talk about the schedule? He said, no, you plan it and I'll do it. Okay. So we're in spring break art camp. Why am I showing you this? Can you all see the overhead nicely? Um, yes, I'm going to Paris in a week and a half to teach lettering in Southern France. I'll do it again next. It's sold out, but I'll do it again next year, hopefully. What I'm showing you is I did... I needed to do lettering. I missed my home planet for a project. And I want to show you how many times I do it. And then what I go ahead is I circle my favorite one. So I have I miss my, my miss home planet. And I want to show you that. And I made my living as an illustrator for 12 years. Okay. But I still have to try and practice and take my favorite ones oh and i had more pages before this this is when i'm warmed up it's okay to do art that sucks that's ugly hideous you hate it's okay so what that's okay i don't care just keep going it gets better hope that was helpful is that helpful type in your comments now we are going to look at some examples of traditional media. Good. Traditional media is great for your career because you're going to get things that you can only get with paint or pencils, colored pencils, ink, anything like that. You can scan it into your Procreate to digital device. Yes, that's what I did, Jennifer. I scanned in the ones I liked and then laid it out. So it's great. Very excited to learn from you. Thank you, Zoom user. Make sure you have set the blue bar at the bottom of the, the webinar chat panel to everyone, not hosts and panelists, so everybody can see. Ginger says, so good to see the ugly parts of the process. I told my uh, students, French lettering students, that uh, maybe I told you folks too another time, I'm trying to draw pansies. And they suck. I'm really bad at it. But I know I'll get there. I know I'll figure it out. Okay, this is Kendra Binney. These are projects that my agency has commissioned. Kendra Binney. And you can see the beautiful textures she gets. And she probably scanned it in. And um, I think that this is a little bright. Is that better or worse? Is that too dark? See what you say. Do a little in between. Maybe that. Perfect. Oh, good. Okay. All righty. Make sure your um video, your thing is up full brightness too. That's that. Next we have, look at this. This is a puzzle by Tara Lilly, ages six to 10. Um, and some of the bits and pieces, no, we need more light for focus. Um, some of the bits and pieces are scanned in traditional media. I'm not sure you can see, but she does scan in some of the work. It's beautiful. This is a great puzzle. Okay, 
this is an arty book i'm teaching arty book uh later in the year and you can sign up of course and get discount now because of our sale this is an arty book and this was written and illustrated by do they not say flora on the cover huh by flora wake up my artist this is a project we got her and an arty book is written and it's a nonfiction book. It can be a how-to book uh, with illustrations. An arty book is nonfiction with illustrations. And look how fabulous this is. So this is all traditional media. Let's see. And she shows some examples of using. Uh, she interviewed people. That's another thing you can do with your book. You can interview people. Um, here we have tracing on a light box. So see, traditional media. <laughs> this is my artist, Marenta. Beautiful. She's all traditional, but then scans in. And she just gets the most gorgeous kinds of things, right? Do you love it? What's the title of Flora's book again? um creative folk art and beyond look at this i mean you cannot get that digitally and you know it, i'm sure some of you will say yes i can okay well i don't know everything remember but it's just so gorgeous i i feel like it's different oh my god how beautiful okay and now we want to go to some more things. You should see my desk. I have so many things on here. It's nuts. This is a book by Sarah Walsh, another arty book. We're going to do a giveaway of the arty book course at the end. So stay tuned. Isn't that gorgeous? So it's this is where it says I like a great big book of awesome activities, delightful drawings, and fantastical fun for kids of all ages. Really beautiful book. I want to show you this. This is me experimenting, my favorite thing, and I really encourage you to like scribble out your. This is Artist Loft brand, Prismacolor Premier, Derwent, um, Color Soft colored pencils, Derwent Ink Tents, and so on. And then um, I play and I test them and then I spilled water on it, but I like it. Look at what it did here with ink. We're going to do ink today. I have bottles of ink. You're going to go nuts. We're going to do plaid. I'm going to do some plaid because it's easy. It's very important to have something easy to play with. These are watercolor stri uh, wallpaper strips and um. This is sort of like plaidiness. And this is florals. Okay. This is a great book. Look at this book. You wouldn't know from the cover. Isn't that crazy? It's really old timey. When was it published? Um, 1972. But look at these illustrations. Look at these. I love these. I recommend you, and you don't have to buy a book at a used bookstore or whatever, or online. You can just take from the internet vintage stuff. But I love a book, don't you? Mm, love to touch it. The more it's a sensual experience of touching, maybe the book has an old smell. Mm, it does. Wow. Or, and the more you can turn pages and feel your papers and hold your materials, it's going to get you in the moment. Um, we live in a culture that's highly critical, so I know you're battling self-doubt and all that. Um, that's totally understandable, but hopefully this, what I'm talking to you about in this art camp will help you. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to do inks. We're gonna look at pretty stuff. Um, this is to show me what I'm teaching today. 
doesn't need to be in there. Here we have, look at this. Look at this. This is so beautiful. Now, here's the thing with copying. I do not want you to copy. I do not want you to copy someone else's art or design. Because, he, first of all, it's wrong. It's not legal. And also, if you copy something, let's say you were to copy this, which is, um, what was this by? Um, where was this sold? What's the gorgeous store in London for clothes? Um, who knows? Type it in. Liberty. Yeah, this is it. Liberty. Oh, he probably says, you don't want to copy this because if you did, I'm an agent, I'm, at, I'm speaking as an agent, and you sold it to another company, and then somebody said, Liberty said, hey, you've copied us. They get a lawsuit. And they'll never work with you again. So you do not copy. But also, copying says that you think you don't have enough of your own talent. And that is not true. Talent is a muscle. The more you work, the more you grow. So you don't want to copy, but learn. What can we learn here? Okay, so we have two parallel rows. Small, medium, large. Orange, red, orange, red, or orange. There's dots. This is an L shape and reverse. Okay, that's interesting. I'll just put it in my head. Here we have, look at this cool, maybe I can do some kind of a cool diamond shape that's all curly whirly with flowers inside. Here's a cool thing we can do. Um, now, obviously this is so generic. You wouldn't want to do white and pink, but you could do a, this, this basic kind of generic thing. If you don't know what's generic, then don't do it. It's okay. So now we are going to, we are going to, we are going to look at, oh, look, I wanted to show you this. How's everybody doing, by the way? Yeah, curly whirly, that's the technical term, Julia. Julia, no, not really. I have filled my pen, my fountain pen, with Diamine Celebration Shimmer Ink. But look at this bottle. Is that beautiful? Is that beautiful? Okay. So I filled it already. Um, Look at these pretty flowers. Vintage. So let's get out the dyes and acrylic inks. So Liquitex ink, red oxide. You can write down what I'm using, but honestly, I just pick these kind of at random with an emphasis on reds. And it really doesn't matter. And what brand, like honestly, this is Dr. P.H. Martin, Fine Art Watercolor, India Red. So this is a watercolor. This is a Liquitex inks. Liquitex, this is Higgins Red Violet. It's pretty. You know, just grab what you have. This is very thick and because it's acrylic. See, it's got very pigmented. And this is not pigmented. It's clear. It doesn't matter. This, I love iridescent rich copper. I love anything with glitter and sparkle. In the old days, that wouldn't reproduce, but now it does better. This is Liquitex Pyrol, Pyrol Red. It's really, oh my God, look at that. Wait till I start using these. And then a green, cadmium yellow light hue. So it really doesn't matter. I used this mushroom panel uh, tin again because I know a previous time people really like that. About the same red in front of me now, says Allison. So again, don't worry about, oh, this one, that one. Doesn't matter, go with your heart. You can use your mind a little like, well, I'm using a lot of reds. I'll use some bright reds. I'll use some muted red browns. And then I'll throw in a, um, something in a different location on the color wheel. I don't like to necessarily think complement the direct opposite. It can just be something that's far away on the color wheel. And look, and here's a purple. I don't know. And then if I need blue, I'll grab blue. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so 
Lilla, how do you work with these? You probably have a better way, but this is what I do. So shake up if it's pigmented. I'm taking this, my jacket off because I don't want my good jacket to get ink on because I'm going to wear this in Paris. And ideally, if I could keep it from getting stained, that would be good. Okay, so we squeeze the dropper. And you can either, look at these little cups. You can get these half pans, empty half pans, they, they're called, and squirt a little in there. But I found this palette yesterday, and you could put them all in there. So I'm going to do that. So once I've used the ink bottle, I'm going to set it aside. And then if it's pigmented, you shake. Okay, let me see what's over here. I'm not seeing any comments. Somebody comment, am I still live? Oh, oh good. Oh, so you're focusing. Okay, good. Now, another thing you can do is take a Sharpie and write the name of the color. Oh, my voice is soothing. Yeah, I kind of get like this calm voice. You can put your colors in order chromatically. Do you use a converter cartridge for your pen? Both, Nadia. Um, both. Oh! Did get on my dress. Okay, I should wear an apron. Um, I don't need to shake this Higgins purple because it's not pigmented. I like, sometimes I like them in order, sometimes I like them random. Um, they will dry out and you can't re-wet them. You know what I mean? Unlike watercolor. Don't you love art? Oh my God. Great ideas with the empty half pan. Thank you, Sarah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You can, oh, you can hot glue them to your palette. How about that? So what's your favorite art material, people? Type it in. I'm so happy right now. Mm. That red. Oh. <laughs> okay, look what I have now. Look at this. This is, this is, where's the name of it? Super, oh, per, this is Pearl X. Pearl X Super Bronze, can't really see. And this is Hydrating Eye Cream. Oh, no, that's not what it is. It is where I can mix. That's another thing, use an old makeup thing and put in some, uh, I mean, you can mix right on your pan, your palette too. But let's scoop out a little. I'm going to take some of this. Well, let's put it in here. And so you can make your own glimmer, glitter. Ooh. Make your own glitter um, paint. So now let's add, um, you know, it would be fun to experiment and see if you use a dark color, what the glitter does. If you use a light color, what's your favorite color here so far? You know, I don't totally know what I'm doing today or in any of these Zooms. I don't totally know. I hope that adds a freshness. <laughs> That's a slight anxiety on my part. Okay, so I'm dipping my brush in my dirty water. Um, don't do this, don't do what I do. And what we're gonna start with is plaid. Why? We can do blobs like we did yesterday. Oh my God, is that gorgeous? And I'm going to put a little extra down there. I'm going to add water. So you see, I really, a dancer does warm ups, right? A dancer does, where's my paper towel? A dancer does warm ups. A singer does scales. What is your warm up? Because this isn't pigmented, it's it doesn't have that sort of richness but it's a beautiful color i don't care i don't care 
This is that glittery goopy. See how thick I can make it? So good. Becky, I'm gonna lower it. I hope that's not a mistake. Okay. And, whoops. Because I am, see, I wipe off the water to get the most pigment on the brush. I'm holding it sideways and kind of flat. I don't know why. Goes down differently. And this is nice because I'm going in order. Do um, you have any questions? Got one question, Lilla. Uh, Rita uh -huh. asks about any, suge any suggestions for a scanner. Um, you know what? These days, they're all good. Um, you can get an inexpensive one. People type in what you have. I have an, an HP. I like it because of the software. Um, it's also a printer. Before, oh, my first one was $1,800. Um, way back in the old days. Now you can get them for a few hundred bucks. So look, I'm taking this yellow and the goop. Now here's when I've mixed it up. But do you see what before I mixed it? When it was not well stirred. Oh, that's fun. Again, I don't plan what I'm going to do with you. I um, I knew I wanted to do inks, but so let's try that again. I'm wiping off my brush. It's nice and dry. See, I'm not stirring it and I'm just putting down and it's like a mess. Mess is good in traditional media. Okay, I like it, but you have to work the way you like. You might like to draw really neat, um, like with a pencil, you might want to draw something and fill it in carefully because you find that satisfying. Yay, that's what you like. Okay, so now this is a warm up. It calms me down. It's easy. There's no right or wrong. I always warmed up before, not always, but mostly before my illustration career. This is a parallel pen. It's a great little fountain pen for italic, comes like this. This is 2.4 millimeter and it is um, a cartridge or I think this you can fill up with the ink you want. So let's go, let's label our things. This is lick. Oh, let's warm up my hand first. So I'm going to go A, A. This is a cold pressed paper. So I'm pressing hard and I, um, and it, it's kind of craggly. That's okay. Oops, I spelled it wrong. Liquid. I love when I make mistakes with you because I want you to be like, okay, big deal. Call my lawyer. I spelled Liquitex wrong. <laughs> so this one is Liquitex. No, it's not red oxide. Oh, it's this one. Liquitex ink. It's really scratchy. That's kind of cool. Iridescent red copper. Oh, I'm going to spell iridescent wrong. Let's see. And when you do calligraphy, if you know how, you breathe. I like to breathe. And I'm pressing on the downstrokes, which... And you see how it goes slowly. There's no rush. Do, do you see that um, this would be better on smoother paper, but it's okay. That fun? Thank you. I nearly just drank the paint water, Leslie. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yes, I have studied calligraphy. 
I taught it to middle school kids in the 70s. And then I taught it in San Francisco, classic chancery cursive like this in San Francisco. And it allowed me to quit my job at the Bay Guardian as a secretary to assist a secretary to the marketing person because I filled two classes and I made, uh, I don't have it with me, but I, I had a little poster that I stuck on phone poles in the Castro in San Francisco. Okay. So we, yesterday we did um, pen over this, but now today I want to try little colored pencils. So I, what am I going to do? Um, I'm going to do the letter E. This is Derwent Pastel. Pretty, right? Derwent Pastel Forest Green. Now I'm going to show you because I, I kind of like the texture and the, this is still damp. Let's try it. Mm, that's beautiful. Oh, poof, can't see it. <laughs> I'm doing a whole video, you can't see. Okay. Um, pastel, you can smudge and mudge. Mudge is a word. I just made it one. Let's try the pastel. We're going to make flowers later. And don't forget the giveaway at the end of the Artie book. This is, so that was um, probably Arsh, uh, Arsh, Arch, it's spelled Arches, Arch watercolor paper. And this is probably 160, 160 pound. This is probably Arsh 88 silk screen paper, which I used as an illustrator because Look how it takes the takes the paper. I mean, takes the watercolor. I'm using pressure and I'm turning the pencil. I'm rotating it a little. And I'm tipping it just to get different line quality. I only took out three pencils because it's pastel. Look what this paper can do. I hope this is inspiring you to get out your materials or buy some. Don't buy too many always. Start with a little because what happens, I recently found some what Whitman and some printmaking papers. Good. That's 80 pound. Arsh, I think the watercolor is probably 160. It's pretty thick. This is Arsh 88 silk screen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I made my living drawing pictures. Bought my car drawing pictures. Paid my rent. This is a pencil. I want you to... Um, play because you know you this doesn't even have to be an art assignment it can just be what you're doing for fun and and you can even you know throw it out when you're done or shove it in a folder because then you're warmed up when you get to your art this is just my style you may have your own style You may have your own style. These are puffs. And and what I want you to do is go, oh, I really like these. I don't like those. I like these. Cool. Cool. It's all good. It's like I want to do more of these curls later. You know? When they're a little more all over. These were too perfect. Um, you, you know what I mean? I want you to say, oh, I like this blue. I'm, I'm going to use that again. Okay, you are just doing tests. You're doing, what's what word am I gonna write now? Who knows? 
If you do it while you listen to a lecture, whatever, it helps you recall the info. Yes, Sarah, absolutely. During, oh, thank you, Taylor. During, um, my, during therapy that I do virtually, I have a sketch pad and I write everything in, in pen. Um, so I'm gonna dip that in water because we're not playing. Okay, this is a fountain pen and it's really absorbent paper. Look what's gonna happen. This is the word I'm gonna write. This is the most finicky pen in the world. Okay, I'm doing a video. Hello, you could at least work for the video. Okay, we're well, maybe we are. Oops. Okay, we're not. <laughs> I tried, but you know, I don't want to bore you to tears. Oh, this one's empty too. Let's see. We'll try one more. And if this one doesn't work, we'll go to watercolor. Oh my God. So this is a Schaefer fountain pen, really inexpensive, a broad calligraphy nib. That's italic. italic. Oh, look at with a cartridge. And look, as I go slow, it really juices up. Do you love this? Okay, we have a question, Lilla. Carrie wants yes. to know what's the difference between what's the difference between ink and liquid watercolor? Um I don't really know, but I can tell you where's that purple one? Oh here. So this is ink and it has no pigment. Remember, it's just this, it's just really clear. And then acrylic tends to have more pigment in it. Maybe I do know. It has more pigment, and so that's where you get like it's got stuff in it you know, like paint. Um, so it's got more thickness than, so this is ink, but it's got all kinds of mica bits in it that makes it all glittery. I'm trying to show you the glitter. Okay. Oh, isn't that nice what that did? I love that. Feels good. It's really important to think about the feels. Like I could just sit and do this all day. Look at this. Ah, kind of let out a breath, slowing down. Why am I telling you this? Because I want you to relax, to enjoy art. What did I say in the beginning? Passion leads the way in your um, career. So let's do a little bit of plaid because I said we would. If I go fast, the ink can't keep up. If I go slowly, the ink can. These are simple mark making things. For me, a face is like uh, just a doodle. I did so many in my day. So it's easy. But you may say that's too hard for me. Then don't do it. You're the boss of your career. I'm not the boss of your career. Now we're going. Look how organized I am. Look at this. I'm pretty amazed. All right. Um, we're going to take a brush. I'm going to dip it in water. I'm going to dry it off a little bit. And we're going to make. I'm going to do some plaid and then like I said we're going to do a flower and then we're going to do a giveaway. Sometimes I like to not clean off my brush. I don't like the marks I'm making. They're even, they're not sensitive because I'm talking, I'm not focused. So I'm going to take another piece of paper and no I'm not because I'm saving that for something else. Um, this dry. Okay. And now I'm going to really think about the tip of the brush.
No, no, we've got a question following on from your mention of a TV show yesterday where you get artists organised. And um, oh. we, have a, we have a question to say, would you consider that um, on a one-to-one -one basis, on a call or a meeting? Wait, what? can you explain the two questions one at a time? Well, this was following your mention yesterday that you'd love to do a dream TV show where you yeah. have to get artists organised. And then somebody's had the question, would you actually consider doing that on a one-to-one -one basis, as in sort of a private meeting or call? Oh, you know, it's funny you say that. See how the line quality is better now? It's funny you say that because I was just thinking I might, I, I don't do it because I'm an agent and I do it for my artists. But I might... I might one day. I'll let you know when I do, though. Now I'm doing thinner by using just the tip. So plaid is such a nice way for you to warm up. Okay, so that's a little warm up. Was that helpful? Oh, thank you, Annette. Um, this is so enjoyable. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we live in a culture that's about competition and improvement and you got to be better and you got to push and let's remember to just, you know, like make a little letter, make a little letter. Rachel wants to know if the acrylic ink is actually shiny when it's dry, Lilla. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. Where is um? Yeah, I'm like 90% sure. Okay, so let's make a flower. And, whoa. We're going to take a new sheet of paper. We're going to load up. We're going to use some purple. Getting low on the perp. And we've got red. And we're going to get a green. Let's get a green. This is Professional watercolor, Windsor Newton. That will rehydrate, so that's good. Who signed up for courses with me? I'm going to see you in class. Who's in? If you're in boot camp, write that down. And what are you signed up for? For coming up this year, semester. Tara, yay! Lettering, my year of art school, boot camp, lettering, lettering, arty book, doing my year, creative play, boot camp, boot camp, character, arty book, ICB is illustrating children's books, home deck, good, lettering. By the way, I said to somebody, she asked if she could do editorial live, and I said, no, I'm not running it. Yes, I am. It's self-paced editorial. So you can definitely take that. Okay, I'm going to take the big brush and I am going to dip it in my water and I'm going to go into the screen and I'm going to make a leaf. Oh, the paper is so sucking up everything. So um, I dipped it in a little bit of purple. Did you see that? to make another leaf. And then I'm gonna set that down, spend money on a good brush, people. Spend money and then take good care of it. It's worth every penny. Shay wants to know if you don't clean brushes between changing colors, how do you maintain consistency if you're doing something with like a children's book? If you don't, if you're not 
Yeah, if you're not cleaning the brush between colours, how would you ma maintain consistency for something like children's books? Um, if you, I, I think those are two. Can somebody else answer it in the chat? I'm not sure. Um, you can write down like, like I would write down, this is green gold with a drop of whatever that red was I put in. Um, you just can jot down what you did if you want. You can mix up enough of a color and put it in um, a jar. Like, you know, you can put, if you needed to do it that way, um, you can just write down but I don't know about the not washing your brush. You could, you have to wash your brush in between. Hope that answers it. Um, if you're in boot camp, you can ask in class. Going first, you're going to get some of the first color and the second color. Usually, make color swatches and write the proportion of the mixing. Says Fiona. Megan says have a specific color group palette. Oh, thank you, Paula. Thank you. I just got a Princeton brush and I agree it's great. Good. To keep the colors consistent, you would need to clean the brush. Okay, so next I want a darker. Oh, look at this. I want this. So we're going to go really light at the tip. And now I'm pressing. And I have a nice stem. And let's connect that a little better. And look what happens when I go there. Mmm, so pretty. I I studied uh, Chinese calligraphy in college, and that taught me a lot about how you hold a brush and the pressure. You hold the brush actually like this, straight up and down. Um, that was really great. So now I'm going to. You ready? You ready? Now we're going to go really intense with a lot of this purple. And we're going to go blob, blob, blob. And we're going to start big at the bottom. And notice that with the blobs, I tip this one is going up that way a little. And they're getting smaller. And now I want to change it a little because what happens in nature is that I'm adding little red. Things change as they grow. They get lighter or brighter as they grow up. I added a little yellow and boom. So here I have a nice little sort of fox glove. How do you like that? Isn't that pretty? It's important to like your own work. And I'm going to put this in here, although you don't have to. And then I'm going to look while this is wet. Oh, that went really straight. That was weird. <laughs> I'm going to make lines. This is a regular pencil. Oh, I've started to do lines like this in leaves. If you at any age don't try new things, that's not good. You want to try. So I've learned these from, I've been copying butterfly wings. And can you see how this is sort of like butterfly? Mm, love. What's going to happen is because I'm pressing really hard and I'm not matching up the lines. See, they're not matching up at the middle stem. And no, nobody is parallel. No lines are parallel. A little wonk each time like nature is. Go get a real leaf. Now, some are parallel, but this one, no. And um, what might happen is because I've pressed so hard in the wet paint is that more pigment. You see the green is going into, I don't know if you can, but it's getting green in there. More pigment is falling into the little valley. So that's cool. And this is, again, getting smaller as we go. And I'm 
oh, I just signed my name and you didn't see it. There, there's my name. And what's today? April. I love twos. And there we have it. Is that pretty? See that? That's what I used. It's my idea. I like this one. There you go. I'd hang that on my wall. Thank you. And it was, oh, you'd buy that. You know what? What you want to do is calm and slow and warm up. And like I showed you, um, and like I said with the pansy, and I think we can go back to me now, Becky, my head. Um, I, sh I told you with pansies, I, um, who wants me to, there. I can't draw a pansy. Oh, 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 I unmuted. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, good. I told you I can't draw pansies. You can hear me, right? Good. I can't draw pansies, but I know I'll figure it out. And that's what I want for you. You can figure it out. And if your first one or 10 suck, so what? Think of scientists. They, they try things and the experiment fails. And it fails and it fails. But they don't give up. There you go. Okay. So who's ready to win a class? Oh, good. What was inspiring, Rachel? What was inspiring? Tell me what you liked so i know for tomorrow married to a scientist huh what do you want for tomorrow pencil and wet media love the ink um i'm gonna these are going fast so i'm gonna have to thank you for getting me off my ipad mission accomplished and don't don't get me wrong i love digital but this is a, like going to a different planet Surprise us. Okay. Um, making up as you go along. Water soluble pet. So calming, relaxing. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity and coming here to watch. It means a lot to me. I'm very excited about this. I said yesterday, I'd like to maybe do a course on this. Uh, art materials and, and, and not just here's how to do a watercolor. You know, I, I teach in a different way, right? in the holistic way about uh, the emotional, the psychological, the physical, the sensual, the joy. So it would be much more holistic. And maybe I would turn, um, put in some practical. Yeah, I was so relaxed, thank you. I wanna model that for you, even when it sucks. Oh yes, we need that class, you hear that? Uh, British Jenny and Becky and Louise. This is good to know. Lettering for children's books. You should add the magical. Yeah. Thank you, Vandela. Noted. Hey, British Jenny. We need that class. Lettering. Yeah, I want to do lettering again. Make art even when it sucks. Because, you know, does it really suck? Does it really? Like, Remember I said I didn't like these um, lines? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll cut them out and and do something else. It's all good. Okay. But enough chit-chat. You would like to win a course. Oh, I'm really pleased with this. You know, you don't always know when you do a live. So, and celebrate the pieces you like. Happens, this is this is in my wheelhouse. It's blobs and lines, okay? This is what I love to do, so it wasn't that challenging. Tomorrow, I have a 
pamphlet from the late 1800s, and we're going to do embellishments like swirls. Oh, what's a great idea? So I want to know, cuts up her art. She doesn't like draws over it, makes in cards for friends. Cool. Okay. So um, here's how we do. i got to get my cheat sheet out. Here's how we do this. In the chat, you are going to guess as often as you want, as many times. It goes really fast. We have a few hundred people in here. And I say a category, and then you guess. Becky and I will look as best we can to see the first correct guess or really any correct guess because it's random and it tends to just work out really well. But don't be upset. Oh, I like that. Pancake is her guess. Don't be upset if you guessed it first and we didn't see you. You get what you get and you don't get upset. And there's a ran the universe is doing the picking with us. So that's what I think. Okay. The topic is... Flora, flora, like something that grows. Oh, okay, let me see if I found it. Oh, here we are. Amy Moore, Amy Moore, Fern. Oh, she did it to host and panelists, so you guys can't see it. Amy Moore, Amy Moore. Whoa, so we can all stop guessing. <laughs> okay, Amy Moore, you won my arty book, my arty book, and that is like that book I showed in the beginning with Flora. So are you here, Amy? Congratulations, Amy. I'm excited to see you in class. I love that class. That is uh, intense. I'm there every week with you, and there's a big book you get not a book what do I call it downloadables all the time you are welcome Amy Moore where do you live Amy Moore PA I'm from PA what what town the answer was Fern Fern Wyoming near Reading oh I'm from Easton originally a billion years ago okay so that is my already book pitch remember if you love art, if you want to learn from me, if you want to make a living with this like I did and still do, sign up now because courses are like a huge percentage. What is it? 25 to 40. Did I do it right, Becky? I wrote it down. Correct. So, correct. Good. 25% off everything. 40% off bundles. Thank you, British Jenny. So do join me and hurry and do it today so that you can be all set. I love art and I've made my living. I've paid my rent. I bought my book. I paid my food. I bought my car. I said book. I wrote a book. I wrote a column with, with my lettering and with art. There's so much you can do. Lettering class. All my courses are online. How long is the sale for? Thank you, Julia. Another week. Okay. Um, but when it's, it's over, it's over. And then you it's going back to full price for courses. So that's why it's good to do now. Um, I guess that's everything. I guess I'm done. How about that? Well, I will see you tomorrow. Um, what's the last day to register for the children's book class with the sale? I don't know when the sale ends. You're welcome. This is so much fun. I love, let me just say people, okay. I have the best students in the world and that is a completely objective opinion. It's not at all biased, but you're kind, you're smart, you're funny, you're interesting, you're deep. I love you all. You are really cool people. I love hanging out with you and um, I'm really excited to see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we will do some more fun stuff and give away yet another course and do embellishing your artwork, adding embellishments. Maybe I'll take this and add embellishments, turn it into a journal cover that you could then send to a client. Okay. Is there a hashtag we can use to, oh, what hashtag, British Jenny, can they use? 
to share today's work. Oh, Matt's Art Camp, yeah, or or hashtag Matt's, maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, hashtag Matt's Art Camp, that'd be cool. I'd love to see what you did. Okay, thank you everybody, this has been great and I'm really excited to do this tomorrow. See you soon, thanks. Oh, and if you have any tips on what I should do in Paris, send it to lilla at lillarogers.com and I will be happy to read it. Oh yeah, and tag Matt's. British Jenny, when you say tag mats, is it just hashtag M-A-T-S? Oh, at Make Art That Sells? Oh, there it is. Yeah, tag, right, duh. Okay, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.